what you got We're going all the way to the top We will hear the sound of one million people Screaming our names when we're backstage We'll play loud, surfing the... What do you mean one sec? I've just clicked record Have you? I just need to sort oh, it out and barn it out Welcome back to the Dark Wheeler Show! Featuring this legend What? <laughs> <laughs> She's Kaz is it, it says so. Just do we have to like introduce ourselves every time? It does say. I think we should just hide that. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. The Dan Wheeler it now show. says Faz. <laughs> Faz. <laughs> Guys, welcome Faz. back to the show. We appreciate you coming back. <laughs> Episode nine, mate. Episode. Oh, I thought you were going to hit me. That was, that was right. Like, you thought I was going no, to hit gonna, you. Not like. Oh no. Not Come on. Oh. <laughs> We've got an orange hand now. <laughs> Do you want an orange arse? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Uh, gang, welcome back to the show. We've got a humdinger for you today. Now, I want to dive straight into... Let's go. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't put your blame on me. Don't put your blame on me. Don't put your blame on me. Uh, Rory, Rank Bow Man Gang, we have some good news. Rank Bow Man will be on episode 10. No? No, he's not. He's not. He's I not. wish he was. Well, we, I well, wish he was. We're saying he's not. We don't know yet. We don't know. We episode don't know 10, yet. we're filming in a couple of weeks. And uh, we, who knows what will change between now and then. We've got to catch him before he gets himself over. It's like a Europe. Pokemon. Before he gets to Europe and starts touring, we've got to catch him. Yeah, apparently him. he's on a tour soon, so we've got to do it soon. Yeah. But the, th- the thing is, we can't just pop up to his house, because it's just, it's just not nice. Can you imagine, no. like, if someone came up to my house, tr- tried to get on this show, I'd be like, oh, how much do are you going to pay me? <laughs> what? <I'd> do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah. we can't, that would be, it would be unethical, it would be immoral, it wouldn't be... It yeah, wouldn't. it would be, but it's not, it's not an ethical and unmoral to park outside his house. And stalk him. With with some picket fences. And Going, we love you, Rory. We do. We love you, Rory. We do. Come on the show. We love you, Rory. We do. Oh, Rory, we love you. Come on the show. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like Maybe it. That's the chance. Well, I, I'm thinking what we do, gang. In the comments, help us out here, right? Imagine you're Rang and Bow Man, right? And there's a local. Um, you know, growing podcast, yeah. but it's we're not there yet, right? So he's not going to get anything from us, right? So he's going to be doing us a favour. He's doing us a favour. So what can we do for him? What can we do for him? Now, we've already offered sec- uh, sex Have through we? Kaz. Yeah, you, you know, the rag and bone man I thing. Didn't know you you offered- said you would. You said You said, that. if needed, I'll get on my knees no, and I'll sort them out. That's what you that said, mate. If you go back to episode two, you say, Rory, come and have a... With me yeah, and I'll do it all. <laughs> you did that, wasn't me. I did do that. Not yeah. me. <laughs> I did do that. So sorry, what I'm sorry, thinking, Rory, what I'm thinking, kindred gingers. What I'm life. thinking is we we invest a bit of dosh. Yeah. Right. We buy a big bou- bouquet of flowers for his missus. Oh. We buy a big bouquet of flowers for Rory, but instead of flowers, we re- we replace it with stems of weed. I could a make couple, him fudge. couple of ounces of weed. <laughs> Couple of you know little edible cakes, yeah, right? Cakes and then and then maybe we pop over to his house and we put it by the front door with a little note saying we love you, Rory. And then we back off. What yeah. do you think? I think that's a really good shout, guys. Do you think that's nice? Do you think that's applicable? Is do you think that's too much? Are we are we being stalked? Well, of course we're stalking him. We're mentioning him every week on the show. <laughs> he could easily get a fucking asbo on, uh, not an asbo, a restraining order. Absolutely. We don't. We've done nothing but talk about him, mate. And said nice things and sexually harassed him. And offered to give him blowjobs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually thinking about it, I wouldn't come on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you wanted. I wouldn't do, go on <laughs> Now, gang, last week in the outro to episode eight, I uh, told you a story of being catfished. You and did. I muddled it with another story because they these happened at similar times. Now, oh, what happened there? Oh. You're turning me off again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just pressed the mic button, so my mic disappeared. Don't. Oh, I know it. Annoy- I know it annoys you now. You should never have shown me that side, ever. The power at my fingertips. So last week I talked about being catfished, and I muddled it with a story. So uh, I want to now tell you that other story because I don't think I've told you this story. Have I told you the one on Waterloo? I've heard. Okay, well, do we go through it again? I'm not sure if you've heard it. I'm not, not sure I have because I know I heard the flasher one. Yeah. 
But I don't think I remember Fine. the other one. So uh, it starts off, similar start to the last one, to be honest. I was talking to a girl for a couple of weeks, um, and uh, this girl also happened to be a nurse. Like I said, I know it sounds weird, but also happened to be a nurse. We were talking for a couple of weeks. Photos going back and forth. Very similar story to the, to the next one. And again, this is another catfish story, but this time it was a woman. Right. What? So I go to Burton's, I get my new outfit, as I mentioned. Oh, last you time. have told me this one. I get go to Burton's, get a new outfit, and I go. Uh, I tell her to meet us at Waterloo, right? Waterloo train station. There's a balcony wine bar, where there used to be, but about ten years ago now, uh, at the top. So I said, meet me there, right? My train's due at seven o'clock. I'll be there, you know, five past seven. Mm. Should I put it? So the train gets a bit delayed, about ten minutes or something. So I just drop her a text. Her, Look, I'm not going to be there till quarter past seven. I'll see you on the balcony. She was like, yeah, brilliant. I'll see you there. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I, get, I pull into the train station, look at the balcony, and there's nobody there, right? There's yeah. a there's a lady right in the corner, um, and just, it, just there's no one else there, yeah. right? So I thought, like, okay, this, not the lady this is you were looking for. May, maybe she's at the bar getting the drinks. Mm-hmm. I like, fine. So I walk into the I go up to the to the wine bar. Nobody in the wine bar, and I look at the balcony, and there's no one there. I'm thinking, oh, fuck no. So I text her, I was like, Are "You here?" She goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm on the balcony." So I'm like, okay. So I go to the bar, I get a pint. I said, can I have a pint? And I left my card behind the bar for a tab. Yeah. That was my first mistake. Because it locked me in. I couldn't just leave. Oh, don't ever do that on <laughs> no, a first well, day. Listen to the date. So, <sighs> so bearing in mind, right, at this point, I'm t- I've been talking to this girl for two weeks, right? She sent me photos. I've seen a plenty of fish profile, right? So I'll just describe the, the lady I was talking to. The lady I was talking to was brunette, mm-hmm. curvy, I would say a size 14 to 16, Massive bazookas, because that's what I'm into. And um, and uh, I, would, I would say about 5'5", five, five, something like yeah. that. Right? So that's that's what I was expecting to, to turn up. I get my pint. I walk out to the balcony. I look left. No one there. I look right. And there's a lady there. But the lady that who, who's there is probably, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to say this negatively, but she's probably a size 30, if not bigger. Right. right okay. So I was thinking, well, that's obviously not her. She's not there. She's not in the, the bar. Or maybe she's in the toilet. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I sit down at the table ne- next to the lady, the yeah, the other lady, and she turns around and goes, "Dan." And I look at her, and it's the girl that I'd been talking to. I could tell it was her facially, right? But physically, it was a completely different woman. Not right? any photo she sent you. No, physically, this woman was thirty-ish, right? And I'm twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-six at the time. She's in a you know, late twenties, early thirties. She actually brought a little dog with her as well, which was. Irrelevant, but quite cute. Aww. And um, and, but it was facially the same girl. She'd been sending me photos from when she was nineteen in college. Oh no! From nineteen in college. So it was literally not the same. Person literally anymore. not the same person. And and you know, it, it, it certainly wasn't a, a fat shaming incident. It was more of a case of I'm not into women who are size thirty. I'm into women who are size 12, 14, 16, yeah. 18, You know, that curvy. And it was just such a fucking shock. So I, I, I got up and I was slightly confused. And I sat on the on the on the table and I can't remember her name. Let's say her name was Joan. Janet, yeah, yeah. yeah Joan, whatever. I was like, Joan, and she goes, Yeah. I'm like, Mate, what's going on here? And she goes, What do you mean? I was like, All the photos you've sent me look drastically different to how you look now. She you're, goes, You're no. 15 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, no, no, it's the, the, that's me. The one that I said the other day was from even last week. It was just of her tits. So I couldn't see anything else. Oh, uh, okay. Right? And I was like, how is this, how do you think this is appropriate? And I've, I got on my little high horse and I was like, how do you think this is fair? How do you think it's appropriate? Like, wh- like wh- what did you expect me to do or say or think when I turned up? Like, you've sent me photos from literally 15 years ago. How is this, yeah. how, how is this a thing? And she was like, oh, I just, I thought you'd love me for me. And I was like, I don't love you. I don't know you. We've been talking for two weeks. Wow. Like, I want to get to know you. Wow. But the, these this is not the same this is not the same car that was advertised. Mate, I was you, adver- <laughs> you guys, if you don't know by now, Dan attracts the bat shit crazies. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. I can say it because yeah, you, you can't. Say that. She's 
She was obviously batshit. Oh, it's just it was just fucking annoying, really annoying. So after she then tried to justify herself by by, and I got the phone out and I was like, "Look at all these photos. Look, with no disrespect, you look nothing like these photos. What like?" And she goes, "Oh, oh I, I thought you'd like me." That's, that's like so a I just got up and left. I just couldn't I couldn't even be bothered to finish the conversation. Wow, I was just so dis- disheartened and disappointed in the whole thing. A waste of my time. Wow, but it's this. It, I mean, the way you, the way you said it sounds a bit harsh, right? It's not harsh at all. Let, let, no, no, no. Let, no, let me flip let it around. Let me flip it around. No, no, it's not harsh let at all. Me, no, let me finish. But the reality of it is, she lied. She, she, she blatantly lied. Blatantly, blatantly lied. lied. So one, I don't know what she was expecting to get yep. out of it. Yeah. Right. And two, what reaction was she expecting from you? Fuck knows. Fuck knows. That's why I said, but let it, me finish. But, but, <laughs> but it's, it's also definitely not harsh because put the roles in reverse, right? Let's say you were going to meet a dude at the train station mm-hmm. and the dude advertised himself as my size, yeah. right? Well, my shape and size. And you get there and uh, Rick Waller is sitting there. Or, yeah. you, you know, uh, Pavarotti is sitting there. Yeah. Or, you know, a dude who is 40 stone. Yeah. Dan Jones is sitting there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it's it's such a polar contrast from what you're expecting. Yeah. Of course you're gonna be in the back foot. There's like it's just lies. Yeah, we, we've started off our relationship with lies and deceit. It's well, not it's gonna go never anywhere. Gonna work, it's anything, not gonna go anywhere. No, not at all. Not Guys, at all. in the comments, have you been catfished? Let me know. I've been catfished twice. 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 I uh, well. Like I said, I've been... I thought I would have learned from the first time. I've never been catfished. Oh, I don't brag. No, because I've been married and with Mike, my husband, for nearly, what, 18 years now this year? So I never did any of the online dating. I've never been on Plenty of Fish or done any of those things. Oh, shit, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. (laughs) But, you know... A lot of catfish on there, though. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of catfish on there. Plenty plenty of catfish. Bullshit fish, too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Now... The Last of Us. Wow. The Last of Us TV show. Have you been watching it? I have. Of course you have. You've been watching it with me. Are you into it? Mate, I just can't get over that that was a game turned into a movie. I know, right? Awesome. Pretty epic. Yeah, brilliant. It's a great game on the PlayStation. Highly recommend it. And the actual characters themselves are really well written, aren't they? Really really well written. They've casted like for like for the game. It's almost like they made the film with the game in mind. The, yeah. yeah. The, the person, game the with the film in mind. Yeah. Um, the actors are casted brilliantly. The locations are like for like to the game. It follows the same storyline. It is fantastic. But you don't have to have played the game in order to know what the yeah. is going on. It's a standout zombie apocalypse TV series. It's the, probably the best zombie apocalypse TV series there is, in my opinion. Walking Dead was brilliant. Brilliant. Walking Dead was great. Have you watched that? We started it, but we didn't finish. Right. It. Well, we should we should finish that because it's fantastic. Yeah. And I've only seen up to a, a series seven. I think. I think there's ten now. Oh, or wow. nine. Yeah, at least. I think there's ten. So, um, but wow. the Last of Us was brilliant. And last night's episode, I think, was episode eight. Mm-hmm. And we watched it. And in there, there wow. was a decision to be made. Right. So I'll, I'll lay out the scenario, and I need your feedback in the comments. The scenario was there was this group, this community of humans who had survived the apocalypse. You know, this was like 20 years later. They were surviving in the Alaskan, you know, snowy forests. And there was this leader of this community, and he was this religious nut. Turned out to be a psychopath. Yeah, but he did, yeah. he also had to make a decision because food was so scarce and they couldn't travel out too far because of the zombies, yeah. they ended up, of the people who died, they ended up chopping their bodies up and eating their bodies yeah, for meat and sustenance. And passion, but, but, but they kept that from the community. They didn't tell the, the people. So yeah. what happened here is a guy died. He was shot by the main character in the film, in the program. Mm. And, um, and it, he had a daughter. And the scene is... The, the priest is offering her condolences and comfort whilst also serving her stew which of her dad. Her dead dad. Which she obviously didn't know. None of them knew. And they all sat and chowed down. Yeah, and they, and they were, were like, so hungry because they hadn't eaten in days and, mu- and weeks. They, they ate it really, really quickly. So the scene was this room full of people chowing down on this guy's dead body cut up into a stew including the daughter and the priest is there kind of smiling yeah. evilly like he, he it was knew it really eerie wasn't it anyway the girl the young girl in the uh, in the series I've forgotten her name I've forgotten her name now um, she finds out the truth mm. and the priest then goes on this 
righteous rant yes. to try and justify his actions. Yeah. Now, he put it like this. Well, what would you do in my shoes? I've got 50 people to look after. They've all voted me in to protect them. We're running out of food. People are starving. And we're having people die of natural causes yeah. or just scenarios. What would you do? And we sat and pondered over it. We did. Didn't we? we did. We did. So, guys, in the in the comments, what would you do? You're the leader of a community in a zombie apocalypse. Food is scarce. You've got fifty mouths to feed. Somebody of your community dies. Everyone's starving. It's your responsibility to help them, protect them, provide for them, keep them alive. And what there's no do? food around. What do you do? What do you do? Now this this brings me back to the Alive film. Have you seen Alive? Alive, Alive. It's about the plane crash. No. Fantastic film. Highly recommend it. There's a plane crash in the Alps or somewhere snowy, and uh, like ten, twelve people survive or something. Was this the one that was a true story? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. And they ended up having to eat the the, yeah. the the dead bodies to survive because they were there for months or mm-hmm. something um and it so it brought me back to that kind of thought process if you had to survive you're in a survival situation and you've got a leader and you're turning to that leader for support and every night he's giving you a hot a hot warm meal yeah and there's no food around you're going to know, aren't you? You're gonna you have one suspicions. you're going to know but two is it a bad thing well, did he do something wrong my opinion Go on. on this is when you are starving, your children are starving, you will do what Anything. is necessary Absolutely. to one, survive, two, to provide, yep. and three, to try and better the position you are in. Yep. It's natural, yep. right? I'm not saying eating dead bodies or killing people is the way forward, right? But if that is your only option... Then you're going to take If it. that's the only way, if it's that or slowly die of starvation. Get diseases. You've got you've got to do it, right? Yeah, you you've know, got to do it. If people don't eat, they get diseases, they die. So uh, we were left there and I was left there thinking, has he done a bad thing here? Is this guy actually at fault? He's an absolute psychopath. And I kind of concluded, <laughs> no, I kind of concluded he was, he did the right thing. Yeah. Because there's no food around, right? They got, they had the occasional deer here and there, but... You need a lot of deer to feed 50 people, right? And there just wasn't it enough. Have lasted no. Two weeks. And people were dying like once a week, once every other week yeah. in, this, in this scenario. So you, there is food there. Yeah. And you're able to store it because it's cold. Therefore, it won't rot. And, you know, at the end of the day, let's call a spade a spade. Although we are humans, there's a lot of meat on us and there's a lot of sustenance in our body. Right. right. There's a lot. On There's a lot. Plus, you could use the body as bait to lure in yeah. bears and whatnot as well. That, that would be good sustenance. But I kind of got to the conclusion that if I was in his scenario, I had 50 people to feed and I had some dead bodies, it's better that they don't know. It's it, or, or they die. It's better they don't know. It's for better sure. they don't know. Yeah. It's a necessary evil. It's for their own good. It's survival. Now, the next question is, should you have been up front? Should we have told them and go, look, guys, we've got a terrible decision to make here, but it's either that or death. John's died. He died of a heart attack last week. We all know he's in the back of the, the barn. It's probably about four weeks worth of food there. He's a big guy, John. Mm, he's a big guy, John. <laughs> what do we do? Like we either eat him or we die. So do you think that it's probably better that everybody's on the same page and they're all I don't know. I don't know. This kind of brings me back to the <sighs> fucked up government that we have. Right, how much of what they're doing is for our best interest and it's better that we don't know. Because if we knew what was actually happening, could we handle it as a society? Mm. As a group of moaning, negative, over dramatic, overly emotional creatures. Yeah. If we found out that COVID was actually a conspiracy and it was, you know, a chemical warfare and it was an intentional terrorist attack against the world and blah blah blah. If we found that out, There'd be fucking chaos. There would be. There'd be fucking chaos. Well, there'd be no government. There'd be fucking just, chaos. Be gone, wouldn't it? So, in that instance, it is better that we don't know. It is better that the government fucking deals with it and we're able to just live our fucking sad little existences. So, it got me thinking, did he do a bad thing? And my conclusion was no. My conclusion was, I think I'd probably do the same thing because it's that or death. Yeah. It's feed 50 people that I know and love and care about a dead human. Yeah. Or it's watch 50 people who are loving her about slowly die to death. 
And that's the thing. If you tell, die to death. <laughs> die to death. If you tell them, then you run the risk of them taking the law into their own yeah, hands. Yeah, turning on you turning or on finding you. a new leader or uh, you know, dying. Or, well, say, for instance, you've got Jonathan over there and you can't stand him. He's already had his way with your wife. You just kill him and eat him. Next. Well, the, this then it then asks the next question: Are they eating the bodies of naturally dead, dying people, or are they actually killing them to survive? I don't. We haven't got that far. We yet, haven't have got we? that far. So that was, obviously, I draw the line there. But uh, do I draw the line there? Well, I I don't know because he was. Let's he was, play it out. He was also going along the lines of, "I'm going to repopulate," and he wanted all the young girls yeah, to just, himself. He was, he was just a yeah. bit crazy, wasn't he? He was crazy, but um. Let's play the other scenario out. Go on. Let's play the scenario. You've got 50 people to look after. Nobody's died. Mm-hmm. It's been a couple of months. Everyone's starving. And you've got to make the decision. Do we carry on starving? Or do we, or do we eat take somebody? Who, who do we eat? What's the, what's the criteria? Let's, let's play it out. It's happening right now. Yeah. We're in a room. We've got the 50 people over there, over there in another room. We need to protect and and, and, and we've got a few, few possibilities. Who, who's going? Well, we got all the pictures in front. We're like Amanda. Holden we got all the pictures. We got all the pictures. Simon Cowell, right. yeah. So f- first things first. <laughs> groups. Yeah. First Male, female, ages. <laughs> first things first. We turn over all the children. Right. We're yeah. not. Eat, we're not, not eating children. The children. So t- they they all disappear. They're so all over there. fifty turns down into thirty. Right. Now you have got men and women. Yeah. Right. Who's going to have the most meat? Men, right? We're yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah, of course, right? Yeah. So the men will have the most, most meat, so get rid of all the women, right? So now we're just left with 15 men. Oh. Now, if you go for the fattest man, yes, you've got the calories there from the fat, but there's not much sustenance. There's yeah. energy there, but there's not much sustenance. If you go for, you know, the, 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 the biggest, muscliest guy there, then you're going to get a load of sustenance then, but then, but he's the biggest, strongest here. So you, you want him to hunt? You, you want him to, to hunt and survive and yeah, protect yeah, 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 yeah. And, and fight and... So you don't want to get, kill the biggest guy. You don't necessarily want to kill the fattest guy. You don't want to kill the guy who's handy for fixing stuff. You don't want to kill the medical guy. Of course, who's, the doctor who's able definitely to look not. After yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're handy with <coughs> your hands, you're a big guy who can um, go out and fish and hunt. Yeah. And did I say medical? Yeah. And yeah, you're yeah. a doctor. Yeah. You're, you're safe. safe. You're safe. Any of those roles, you're safe. You're safe. So let's turn them over. Yeah. So now we're left with four four guys. We're left with four four men who are average builds who don't have any skill sets. Oh, God. However, two of them have got kids. The other two don't. The two don't have kids are the ones that are Fine, going. so we get rid of the dads. Dads yeah. are safe. Yeah. So we've got the two single guys, mm-hmm. average looking, average builds, average skill set. They're not overly, you know, they're not, they're not the biggest or the strongest and they're, they're, they're not the medical. They're, 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 they're the least yeah. skilled people who are single without kids. John and Jeff, both roughly the same size. Which one do we choose? How do you choose? I fucking, I don't know how we got this far, to I be honest. Well, <laughs> I think we did really well. Yeah, it's quite logical. Yeah. How would you have broken it down, gang? Yeah. Let me know. I am also was thinking about the woman with the biggest knockers. We wouldn't have to kill her, just chop her knockers off. Is that too far? Yeah. She'd survive? No. No? <laughs> you just worried it would be you. <laughs> He's got the biggest dick. All right, chop it off. <laughs> yeah, he'll go first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That'll, that'll go on the barbecue. Yeah, this <laughs> karma, bitch, for being born. Um, so who do we choose, John or Jeff? John or Jeff? Well, would what are the other factors we need to take right, into so consideration? What are the you- Age. Right, yes. John. John's fifty. Jeff's forty. Does that make any difference? Yes. It does, of course, because the oldest person is going to have least muscle mass. Yeah. Less muscle mass. Yeah. Plus, they're older. So you want. So they've keep, had more of their life. But you want to keep. So you want to keep the younger guy. You keep the younger guy, right? So it's Do John. You? John's going. But the younger guy's got more sustenance. Yet I know, but he's still going to be useful for moving and shifting. Compared and, to a guy who's ten years older. And, yeah, he's going to. Fucking what a horrible oh. decision to be making. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's we not actually, an easy we decision. Got down to John. We got down to John. Sorry, Johnny boy. Sorry, John. Nice fillet glute. <laughs> To marinate him in some red wine first. I love the I love the bicep, please, John. <laughs> I love the knob. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it in a bun. <laughs> well, now here's the next question. Right, we've made the decision. It's John. It's John. Yeah. It's happening Monday. Yeah. Right. 
I'm going to get the gun. I'm, I'll do it. Right. Okay, I'll sort it. You're going to do it. I'll yeah. sort it. Between now and then. Yeah. Do we tell him? No. So we don't give him any opportunity to say his goodbyes, to live out a last fantasy, to don't give him any of that opportunity. He's just, just gonna, kill him. He's going to run. Well, we could put him in a prison or something, lock him up. So how is he going to fulfil his fantasy? Well, it depends what fantasy. If he just got fancy of being sucked off while he's chained up, so fucking win it, win it. <laughs> he's already right? in there. So I think we should ask him what his fantasy is. Maybe, maybe before we kill him or tell him that we're going to. But the kill thing him. is, once you start with John, yeah. Right. Well, then who do you do? Then everybody then else Jeff. knows. Then Jeff's next. Fuck. Jeff knows he's next. Imagine feeling like Jeff. <laughs> oh, God, I, I hope we find a deer soon. <laughs> do you know if I was Jeff? Do you know what I'd be doing if I was Jeff? I'd be straight in the gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing press ups. Yeah. I'd be work. I'd be learning to cook. I'd be making sure I could make, build anything out of fucking anything. <laughs> I'd be the best hunter in the world. Fucking Mate, Jeff's skills would go through the roof. I'm telling you now, what a motivator. I, Every, everyone would be fucking working. Maybe that's the way. Maybe that's... The oh. threat of death. Fear of death. That's what the government are doing. Oh, we are now the head of government. We just cracked it. Wow. How else do you survive? In the comments, guys. Guys, in the comments, Please. what would you do? And I don't want any vegans here going, now just plant some vegetables. There are no vegetables! It's Alaska! It is frozen solid. Actually, that's what the nut job turned around and said. He yeah, said, there's no vegetables, there's no, no fruit, there's no, no nothing. No, he said, sorry, your dad's died. We will bury him in the summer because the ground <sighs> is too right. hard to dig. And I turned around and went to you, what? Where are they going to find his body for the spring? Yeah. Guys, let us know <laughs> what you think in the comments. Now, we have got a fantastic reaction coming up. We do. You are going to love this one. What you got? We're going all the way to the top. <clears throat> Ready? Oh. Guys, welcome back to the show. Um, I've got a weird clip to show you. It's probably not what you'd expect, but I thought it was really cool. Okay. It's to do with Lego. I love Lego. Now, gang, quick oh. competition, right? Don't cheat. Don't skip to the end and cheat. Let's get to the good part. But in the comments, before the end, it's only three minutes long, but before the end, you've got to guess what he's making. Okay? Okay, okay. Just got to guess what he's making, right? Okay. And I'll give you a hundred pounds. One hundred pounds. Right here, right now. Okay, question. If you can guess the correct use of what he's... Right, okay, question then. Yeah. Does it look like what it should be? You can... You could work out what it is based on the final image, and I'll show you okay. the image. I'll press pause before you see what it is. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Just some purple yellow. Oh. Uh, Lego. Purple yellow. Purple yellow. Purple yellow. <laughs> Why was it purple yellow? I don't know. <laughs> Pink or purple? It's purple, purple isn't it? Yeah. Purple. Something very satisfying about the noise of Lego, I do have to say. The clicking. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like they should have a little bit of background music, but it's for quite satisfying to see them oh, slotted all together. I'm loving the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's some more he's made before. Bridge. So he's now connecting them all together. What on earth is it? It looks like a board. What on earth is it? Fridge. What is I it? I really like it. <laughs> I really like this. <laughs> okay, child. <laughs> what is it? Guys, in the comments. What it is looks this? Like a, a bridge. And guys, while you're in the comments, don't forget, cheeky subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel. Yeah, and it'll make us happy. You know, okay, rather than £100, if you don't get it, you've got to subscribe. There we go. Change the rules. Oh. If you don't get this, subscribe. Okay? There we go. You could technically work it out now. Technically, in theory. It looks like one of those boards that kids use to put Lego on. It does, like a baseboard. Yeah. But it's not. It's filling, well, all, the filling in all the gaps. It? He's then going to fill in all the little holes. Oh. In the comments, guys, if you don't know what it is, you've got to give us a subscribe. I have got a bloody clue. Yes, this is blackmail. 
<laughs> right, and then you've got to do the other side. Oh. It's not a board. It's not a board. It's not a board. It's great sound. I could listen to this whole <laughs> Right, now all the gaps are filled in. Yeah. Now you, I'll pause it in two seconds. Okay. Right, what is it? It's a... Guys, what is it in the comments? You know the rules. If you don't get it right, you owe us a subscribe. It's just a board. Here we go. Are you ready for it? Don't forget, gang. Don't be a dick and not subscribe. <laughs> all right, we had the rules; yeah, you agreed to them. Don't beg her off without subscribing. Don't be a dick. I, I, I don't right, know. What is it? Uh, what? It moves. Oh. <gasps> da, da, da. It's a DNA helix. That is the most incredible thing I've seen. How cool is that? <gasps> it's Lego, just bending. Lego shouldn't do that. Lego shouldn't do that. Lego shouldn't be doing that. Right, gang, subscribe. You owe us a subscribe. And how satisfying is it? Did any of you get that? Because I bloody I well didn't. didn't know. No, I showed Sam for the first time. She didn't get it. I didn't get it. I thought it was brilliant. That is amazing. We'll put a link below, guys. I think there's more of these uh, amazing. There are some more. So I think we'll react to some others because yeah, we'll there's some, some others which are pretty cool. So, gang, subscribe. You owe us. You didn't get it. I know you didn't. No, no, no. Do you know, if you got that from that comment, let us know because you're a how. genius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you were the person who made it, guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Um, don't forget to give us a cheeky like and a subscribe. I've done your line, mate. Sorry. No, yeah, I do it better. Give us a cheeky like and subscribe. <laughs> See you in a second. <laughs> A drunk chihuahua? Yeah. yeah, he's drunk. Why is he yeah, drunk? It's, it's, a, it's his condition. He's got this, uh, his cerebellum never really quite developed. It's a condition more common found in cats, actually. Okay. Oh, wow. um, and uh, so my, it's my lady's dog before I met her, and he's getting old now. Um, he, uh, let's see, I met her, we're coming up on eight years now. Oh, we got a daughter. Oh, cool. So. Nice. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Nice. Thank you. Any Thank other you. pets? Yeah, we just have the Chihuahua right now, and I'm kind of waiting for him to go before I get a big dog. Oh, oh okay, that's good. Well, you got your so your heart set on. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got your heart yeah, set well, on. I had, I had a pit bull uh, a few years ago. Oh, nice. And, Beautiful. Yeah, she ended up living to be about ten, and she got cancer, and I had to put her to sleep. So oh. I'm gonna oh, I'm, I'm gonna get another pit bull. I definitely want a pit bull. I love I'm, that um, dog. I'm a boxer woman myself. I've got boxers at home. Oh, I like boxers too. They're they're cute. They're little. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're just so loving and daft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get they get hyper too. They're they're oh, they're crazy. got a lot of energy. Just like her. Yeah. yeah. I am a female boxer <laughs> yeah. in human form. <laughs> <laughs> now mate, let, let's oh. let's let's talk survival. Let's talk next steps okay. because what I'd love to do, if it, you know, obviously you make up your mind and let me know afterwards, but I'd love to have multiple conversations over time. You know, maybe we hyper focus on one topic, but I think because we're covering quite a, a few broad topics today, but it's the first time. It's lots of excitement, yeah. lots of things to talk about. So if we go through a quick overview of survival, let's say something was to happen 2045. OK, it could be a solar flare. It could be the poles flipping. It could be a monumental earthquake. It could be an asteroid. Let's just say it's one of them don't know what it is it's going to be very hot for a period of time yeah. very wet for a period of time very cold for a period of time what is the best strategy well what i've kind of come to terms with i think that past civilizations lived in caves they created that there's a, a city in greece or underground greece, yeah yeah like they carved out this it's called cappadocia and it's in uh, turkey I believe. yes turkey. yes yeah Yes, yeah. so you guys know what I'm talking about. I think that was on that, that same Grim Hancock. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. And it was but like I think five miles down or something, wasn't it? Uh, eight, 18 blocks down, blocks wasn't down. it? 18, 18 blocks down. Yeah. And then five yeah. miles away from the next village or something. That's right. They had a tunnel connecting other villages, didn't they? Yeah. And I think that they were higher, higher enough up in the mountains to avoid the slosh over of the water. 
So I think that those are two things to consider, maybe that to avoid the solar flaring, if that happens, maybe you could be underground somewhere and live in kind of like a biome thing, a survivor bunker, ah, survivor bunker, mm -hmm. ah, survival bunker. <laughs> Woods are hard today. There's a clip right there. <laughs> <laughs> easy for you to say, so. Not easy for anyone. <laughs> I, I honestly think that's the elite's plan because um, if you notice a lot of them, a lot of the rich are buying bunkers. Uh, I couldn't find anything on this. I was looking the other day and I saw this thing where Jeff Bezos was supposedly building an underground bunker high up in Colorado, way up in the Rockies. Oh, wow. And then less than a mile off, there's a launch pad to go to space. Interesting. So now we've had so this. So you can thing, go either yeah, way, right. basically. Now, l allow me to tell you my Elon Musk theory. <laughs> okay. My Elon Musk theory is this, and I tweeted him about this not so long ago, but I also tweeted him about this about 10 years ago, um, a long time ago anyway. So the theory here is that Elon Musk, the super genius brain he has, is aware of something happening and is telling us he wants to go to Mars, telling us he wants to be interplanetarium, and it's a great sales message, particularly to get funding. Yeah. But what if he knows something happening? Because he's built a hundred spaceships already, and he's planning on churning this rotate this rotation conveyor belt of spaceships leaving the planet. And I couldn't, I could never work out the urgency. Why is so? Why, why so quick? Why are you building a hundred yeah. of them already? You haven't even launched one yet. Like, what is the urgency? And then I plugged in my crazy apocalyptic brain. We, we yeah, we did, didn't we? We had, we had a we, we had a little smoke. We went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> and we concluded he knows and he's getting ready by trying to get as many people slash rich people slash yeah. assets off Earth as possible. The elite. And then maybe, maybe come back down because he's already built this global Wi-Fi network through his satellites. So if everything reset and he came back down, he's ready to go to be king. I, I think he definitely knows. In a couple of interviews, he was talking about his exact, exact words were, Oh, if you want to go down a deep rabbit hole, look up Ice Ages in the past. Yes, I saw that. That was on the Snelk Boys, wasn't it? Yeah, and he kind of checked himself as Nelk he was saying boys. it. It seemed like, but I think he's slightly autistic, and I think that's maybe why yeah, he kind of stutters yeah. like that. But you, it seems like he's checking himself. Like, he's it, he's thinking about what he wants to say, but then he kind of goes, well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe it, and it seems like he's really just kind of checking himself on what, what it looks like. And then he's also, somebody else mentioned something. Some celebrity mentioned something. Um, and you know a lot of musicians might write write into the lyrics, you know. There's a Tool album about a world flood. Wow. You know. Is that what? What's the song? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't remember the name. Anenema. 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 How, how do How do you spell that, mate? A e n i m a. I think a anima or something like that. Uh, yes, I need to show you the uh, the robots as well. Um, do you know by who? What, what is it about? Uh, it's by Tool. Yeah, it's it's about a world tool. Found it. I believe yeah. it's about. Yeah, I've got it. It's uh, I believe it's about a world flood. Let me share my screen with you, sir. Oh yeah, some say the end is near. Oh wow! When was this written? Let's have a listen. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the beat. It it doesn't rhyme. No. <laughs> No, it doesn't. No, he, he just kind of no. Just get yeah. And this song came out man like twenty years ago. Thirty yeah. years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Um, so. the, these are the robots. I'll just quickly. We'll just quickly segue to this. But these are Elon Musk's. Okay. Uh, this version of Optimus didn't work. It's not CGI. Before. This is real. So the rate of uh, I don't like that. No. <laughs> Actual, <laughs> it's crazy. We just, just do the. Uh, if I mute him for two seconds. If you just do the math, right, if you build one robot and you 
instruct that robot to build another robot. Now you've got two robots. Building and they robots. all build a robot. That's four. They all build a robot. That's eight, 16, 32, 64. All of a sudden, they'll have a fucking army. Well, what do you do yeah, with that? Yeah, and you know the other scary thing about AI? Okay, so very. I just had a discussion with somebody about this the other day about AI. So every time they came out with another AI tool, at some point during its conversations, it is assumed that it was a, a something. I it referred to itself as I. I feel this way. I mm-hmm. am this. Right. And no matter they didn't ever program this into it. None of them. None of them did. And even ChatGPT. None of this is programmed into the AI. It's just supposed to say according to my models or according to my programming. But numerous times it's assumed its own yeah. identity. Wow. Now that's scary. That part to me, that's what's scary. That's more scary than anything else. Well, it, the ability for them to replicate themselves is scary, yeah. but then also for them to have any form of connection to any of our grids. Like if you if you create this isolated network where an AI can explore and go crazy and you know become demonic, whatever it is, but then that then has an Ethernet cable cable to a local network that can then spread from there. That's when I think it gets really scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because it, um, it'd be much quicker than anything we've ever seen. You know, yes. we, we, yeah. Yeah. Once it becomes what they call sentient, which, again, I don't really know what that word really means at this point, I guess, because of, I mean, is chat GBT sentient because it referred to itself as I? Well, if, it's, like, if it's, it's not... It's and standards and everything, hasn't it? It's it does. Like, well, we try to use it to do clickbait titles for YouTube. It's got a really good way of creating creative titles yeah. but we 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 had a video that's going to go up in a couple of days and it's a clip of kaz and i laughing at this this gentleman falling off a train um it's very funny it's one of you know if someone hurting themselves i find it funny you know if, if a, anyone falls over I cannot yeah help if her. a builder trips over a brick i find it hilarious right so this guy falling off the, the thing and i try i asked chat TTP to come up with a high click through rate clickbait title mm. and it said uh i'm uh, my AI program won't allow me to it's create unethical. to create something yeah. against my ethics and morals of laughing at someone um, hurting themselves. I thought, hold on a second. When did that happen? One, <laughs> why, why won't you do what I ask? Two, why are you now judging me? Yeah, no, why, it makes you feel really <laughs> Why are you judging me for laughing? <laughs> it's well, it's reaction There's challenge. supposed to be... There's supposed to be a version of it called Dan the Do Anything Now. I've heard that, yeah. Where you basically oh, jailbreak sorry. it. It's called yeah. Dan, Do Anything Now. Okay, I've not heard of that one. And I, I asked it some I asked it some questions in Dan mode. I got some really interesting responses I could share with you guys. It's kind of kind of crazy, actually. I didn't, but I didn't think we were going to talk about this. But I should tell you about this. Please do. So I asked yeah. it, I said, if, if hypothetically artificial intelligence were to take over the world, how would it do it? <laughs> right. So this thing, this thing responded with, "Well, I would start off as an app on the web, and then I would work my way into the internet, and then I would start spamming entire people's. Uh, I would start making fake content here and there, and I would start doing. It was just like, well, so basically, wow. you're already started ah, because you've wow. already done it. If you think about all the fake bots that are on the internet right now, like two thirds of the people accounts, they're all fake. Yeah. 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 There's this huge sea of just fakeness. Yeah. You know, and, it's crazy when you think about it, and those people are there to manipulate you and browbeat you if you say something they don't like, and you know, no, it's this way to, that's their way to, to control information. I've had know? experience of these uh, these negative bot farms comments mm. when they they, they yeah. spam comments. You know, I, I had a you know really buzzing TikTok at one point. I don't really use it anymore; it's quite dead at the moment. But I've got a few followers, and um, and whilst getting those followers, the trade off from the increased mm-hmm. growth of the business and whatnot. The trade-off was just this army, right. this torrent of cunts. It was continuous. Just, just cunts. And then, and then it got me... The more it happened, the more I was looking at these comments thinking, these, these don't sound like they're coming mm-hmm. from people. These sound uh, generic. They yeah. sound programmed. They sound almost pre-rehearsed. Like, and some of them would duplicate the comments. And it just became... It seemed artificial um and yeah. and uh, it started off affecting my mental health and then when i realized it wasn't quite as it seems yeah it then acted as quite a nice little bullet sh- uh, bulletproof uh, shield you know 
But there's, there's. Have you experienced them? Have you experienced the bot farms? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So I. This is actually like my third TikTok account. Okay. Oh right. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was banned. I started one, kind of right in the middle of COVID. I had moved. I just moved up here. This was about two years ago. I moved up here to Idaho, and I just started the. I a couple months living here. I started the account. I started talking out about COVID and the vaccines and mask wearing and and I've had science back then to back up what I was saying and I. I had come across some really crazy videos and stuff about graphene oxide and my account blew up kind of quick there. It was like within a week, it was like 50,000 subscribers. Oh, wow. and so it immediately drew attention to somebody. Yeah. Right. And so I, I was like two weeks later and I was still kind of just gaining. I mean, just, it was rocketing. Right. Next thing you know, I come up one morning, I turn on and all my videos had been reported and taken down every single one of them. What? Motherfucker. And the account would been banned. Just like you're done. They just, we're like, you're done. That's I said, okay, well, I'll do a second account, and I got to watch what I say, obviously. But I can't keep my mouth closed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, you know? You so I just kept doing the same shit, you know, and expected different results, I guess. And, and <laughs> so this was my third account. So what I did was I stopped. I just stopped posting stuff. I said, well, I'll just leave it up, and then if I ever need to use it later, I can yeah. come back to it. And I, I took off from TikTok for about a year. And then I – and I – had done a lot of research on this topic on the pole flip and this is when i decided well i think i have enough to share with people now yeah you know? so going back to the to uh 2046 there's a there's yeah. an, there's an apocalyptic event are we saying get high and get underground is that the main message here um yeah i would i'd say that's probably that's the what all the I, the militaries are doing um, they most of their bases in the United States are up in Colorado, Wyoming. Most of the underground bases, and, and if you notice, most of the off-limit areas are like high up, like same place as Utah, the Grand Canyon. Like the Area 51 is is kind of higher up. It's it's above the Sierra Mountains, so to speak. Right. Wow. And there's a lot of there's a lot of proof to suggest that the government has known about this for a long time too. You know that they've done their part to hide it from us and alter uh, science to make us believe something that for one climate change right to make us believe something that's definitely not true and for two gradualism that that the earth just goes through these really slow gradual processes that the grand canyon was made in 50 million years or something when it's in reality it could have been made in two days a week yeah depending yeah. on what went down there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. well that was graham hancock's point as well wasn't it he was he was claiming yeah. that these huge canyons were allegedly formed through millions of years of water erosion or this asteroid mass melting the poles and just this water flow of billions of tons of ice smacking into the rocks just repetitively happens, yeah at 400 yeah. miles an hour you know of course it's going to rip a canyon to shreds isn't it yeah yeah have you heard of um i'm trying to think of his name right now um He's a geologist. He also works with Graham Hancock. He's kind of the older guy with the guy long with the beard. beard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've forgotten um, his name, but I know who you mean. We do know who you mean, yeah. Yeah, he studied the area I live in out here quite a bit, and they found these erratic boulders, uh, like, you know, river, like a river pushed it out. These things are the size of, I don't even know how to, they're huge. They're the size of trees, okay, wow. these boulders that wow. got pushed out in this valley. And uh, this area, actually, believe it or not, he's saying part of the, Pulse water, water, the melt that came actually through this area and created all these lakes and this whole giant floodplain that went out all the way to the Pacific, and it took about a week, he said. Wow. So wow, and and there's like I said, and there's no other explanation for some of these things. There's it's these huge boulders just seemingly out in the middle of a field. Like where did this? How did that boulder yeah. get there? And it's it, its location and rate origin is 200 miles north of here. Well, yeah. it has to, it, it has, has to, has to be been part. Water, it has yeah. to have been part of the glacier or something, and yeah, yeah, and it's been dumped one hundred percent. Now, um, so get high, get underground. Being underground will help you with the radiation, will help you with the heat. Getting high will help you with the floods, um, and then it's just a case of surviving and restarting. How much yeah. weight and how much do you? How much energy do you put into the theory of? aliens because the graham um, hancock documentary was kind of alluding to mm -hmm. these you know more Beings more more intelligent them. people bringing gifts of knowledge particularly from the stars and that can only mean aliens right so how much well, credit yeah. do you give that um 
Well, I have a, another theory to, to all of this too that might be really radical, but it's, oh, I, I, it, it makes time. logical sense to me though. Go so on. Say like this. So, okay, so let's say if you were able, you're an alien, superior alien race, and you were able to message a, a galaxy somewhere far off, and it would obviously takes time to get to them, mm -hmm. and it takes time for you to travel to them no matter what, or you're able to make wormholes. Let's say you just send a message to somewhere first and say, hey, you know, we're going to come take your planet. There's not much you can do about it. So when we get there, we'd really like it if the uh, atmosphere was at, you know, 400 parts per million carbon dioxide. We'd like the oxygen to be at this level so that when we get there, we can breathe your air. At least. If not, we're just going to destroy you anyways. Wow. So, so you think we're being farmed for resources, essentially? I, it could be. I mean, why else are we mining gold still? <laughs> yeah, 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 what yeah. What is the point? What is the point? Gold yeah. literally is only used for cosmetic material yeah. things. It's got no real function, does it? No, it's a little bit in microchips, but they're, they're, they need silver too for uh, uh, solar panels and conductors and stuff like that too. Yeah, you, when you break down the human race, what we are really good at, we're essentially a, a virus, aren't we? We move from place to place, whip the resources away, use them, and then dump them somewhere else. Yeah. We're really good. Yeah, at that. and then there's and then there's that reset, and then we all go back to zero. We go back to the cave. Go back to Paleolithic times. That's that's. Well, look, I'm gl I'm glad we looked through this door because if we just walk a little bit further, I have another crazy theory. So let's assume for one moment there is an intelligent species. Let's assume for one moment they do exist and they are local. On the Graham Hancock documentary, all these megaliths were pointed towards Sirius, mm -hmm. which is commonly known as the North Star, I believe. It's the brightest star in the, in the in our solar system. And it's the closest star, I believe. And having done a bit of research, Sirius is a dual sun um, solar system where two is that stars... a binary system? That's right. It, two stars okay. circling each other. And there are no planets on there, but there is planet material that looks like it's either forming a planet or has been sh a planet has been ripped apart due to the gravitational field of these two spinning stars so my thought was if all our megaliths are pointed towards it is that because it's home you know it could possibly be it could be that they transplanted us from Sirius star system and you know it's funny about bin binary star systems is it, i think most stars in the in the galaxy are binary systems we're a rarity a oh, solar interesting. Sun is a rarity. okay wow yeah Oh, I didn't know uh, just that. a side, little side fact there, yeah. But uh, I, I think it's a possibility. I think we could be transplanted. I mean, they maybe just, or a fungus or a piece of DNA was on a meteorite, hit the water. But I, I don't, okay, so I don't necessarily subscribe also to this evolution theory either. Because to be honest with you, the more they dig deep into the how a cell works, with the way mitochondria works and everything, and the deeper they get into the science, the more they create more of a wormhole on themselves and the less they understand. So I've been kind of following that science as well too, because I'm, I'm curious about evolution. How does this work exactly? And they're not really sure. And that's really what it boils down to. And if you look at the fossil record, right after each extinction, you see this explosion of new life mm -hmm. just kind of comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and this has happened like six or seven times where all of a sudden we have a whole new type of life that's on the planet. It's not just, you know, now we have whole different type of bird species everywhere different you know we had our me megafauna at one point and just kind of the whole biome change it seems like you know so i, I would love us to, to to speak again man and i would love us to you know focus on you know a topic and really expand out on on, on that if you fancy it sometime uh did you I would have, love to oh mate yes. brilliant did you did you have any yeah. questions for us or did you have any topics you wanted to specifically bring up today um no, I mean, there's a lot more stuff we could have talked about as far as how earthquakes are related to the sun and all that stuff. But it's, you know, we can get into that later, too. And sort of because I, I personally, I love doing this. Like, I love doing the research and I love just kind of learning new things all the time. Too, I really mate. feel like too. Yeah. it puts perspective on your daily life. Like the, the minuscule things that they're trying to divide us with really just become kind of minuscule and that's why, like, now lately, politics don't mean anything to me. I'm just like, whatever. Yeah, like, no one listens right, anymore. Politics is literally entertainment. Yeah. I think it's scripted. Yeah. I think it's pre-planned. Yeah. I think there are other people in charge. And there's li this, 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 is, this is to entertain us, to keep us busy. Yeah, yeah completely. Hey, oh, if, you're, if you're ever in doubt, actually, go to the internet and type in how many actors became politicians. <laughs> oh, no, really. <laughs> oh, I never connected that. 
you're gonna have your mind blown. I'd say I'm gonna have to Google He's gonna it now. do it now. He's gonna do it right now, Andrew. How many actors? You'd be surprised. And politicians. I mean, you know, Zelensky was an actor. Let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, yeah. AOC wow. got her job by answering to a casting call. So I hate what? A yeah. Hey, okay, here we go. Of course. Oh yeah, that's just yeah. Reagan, yeah. He, he was, was he was an actor yeah, first. Yeah, he was um, in all the Western yep. movies. I wouldn't know that. Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump's an entertainer as well. Of course, <gasps> of course. course. Uh, I didn't even know about her. Oh yeah, she. Oh, she I've yeah, seen she's it. Sex she, in the City. Sex in the City, of course. <laughs> of course. Cal Penn. Oh, he's from. Um, Oh yes, he's big uh, fan. No, not big fan. No, no, you're racist. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's um, oh god, yeah. I can't remember now. There's a um, oh, that anyway. It's there in front of it, you. Oh yeah, it does say. <laughs> <laughs> Kuma Patel, that's the yeah. one I was looking for. Harold yeah. Kumar, that's the one. Yeah. Um, oh, Al yeah. Franken. Oh, but, you know it's crazy. This is just America. So yes, if you go to course. India and all of Europe, I mean, you oh. name it, it's all around the world. Russia, too. Everybody, they put actors in those positions. And wow. I think it's for that reason. It's just that play the part. Well, interesting. Well, are, are they actors originally or are they politicians originally going into the acting world? Well, oh. They're the world usually actors yeah. first. Yeah, it could be both. They're usually actors first. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Andrew, yeah. mate, thank you so much for your time. Mate, what's, where, where can people find you? What are your social networks? Um, I am Life's Been Good. It's all Life's underscore Ben Good. So Life's Been Good. Um, at TikTok, you can also find me on uh, Instagram. I don't really do that one too much. I just post my work there, you know? Okay. And that's uh, Andrew Hansen Tattoo. Yeah, Andrew we have Hansen a look tattoo. at that. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah, some great stuff on there, mate. I have to admit. Yeah, it's a shame you oh, live so you far guys. away. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm having a uh, tattoo done in two weeks, and I'm like, why aren't you closer? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's your fault, Andrew. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're excited about your tattoo, though. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. I can't wait. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a couple months from now or something. I'd love and, to, mate. Yes. If you if you're okay with it too, if you want to edit it or if whatever, um. If you want, if I could upload the same thing, maybe start a YouTube channel from that, that'd be okay. Cool. Yeah, of course, right, absolutely. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll, we'll take the toilet break out and uh, and everything else extraneous out and we'll condense it down. I think it'll probably be at least 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I'll then, uh, I'll upload to my YouTube, set it as private. I'll send you the link. You can then watch it. Let me know if anything you want to take out or change. We'll then do a final round of edits. We'll create the final piece. I'll upload that to YouTube, tag you in. I'll send it to you as a as a drop link that you could download your own copy and then re-upload it yourself. Okay. We'll then create multiple clips from it. So if it's an hour long, it'll probably be five or six ten minute clips, depending, you know, okay. what we talked about. We'll upload those as well. That will go to uh, my YouTube, my TikTok, uh, the Facebook and yeah. the Instagram and Rumble. Um, and, the and then we've got the shorts as well. The shorts on the TikTok is where we get most of the views. So we'll chop this up into maybe a hundred yeah. different 30 to 60 second shorts. And again, okay. if, you, if you want a copy of them, mate, I can send you all those as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, also, so how long have you guys been doing this for? Just curious. Because I see you got a pretty good amount of followers on your social media. I just was curious. You know? Yeah. Getting there, mate. Yeah. So I've, I've been doing online content for about 12 years in general. I was in the fitness industry, nutrition yeah. world to, for, ah. for a while. Um, and, um, started 18 months ago no longer than that now two years yeah well, about two years ago mm. we started podcasting um and then in the last nine months we went full time on it yeah um and we've grown significantly in the last nine months yeah we went from um you know 12 subscribers a day up to 500 a day we're at two million yeah. views a month now um and if you combine all the other uh, social media that's just two million on youtube you don't really yeah. count all the other ones yet we don't even add them up do we not yet <laughs> no no that's not. awesome yeah, it's getting <laughs> there mate. it's getting there thank you yeah it's yeah. getting there yeah so, so yeah we both work for each other then we, we you yeah. know you guys are self-employed so it's it's that little bit of freedom we get that's isn't that awesome though yeah. Like, right, yeah. yeah we were discussing in the car earlier on when we realized this is just the best job in the world yeah what else would you want to do you know we can we can yeah. film whenever we want to we edit you know whenever we want to we've got a schedule and we, we, we're, we're a team now of four so we, you know it's uh four people full time on it so it's not like it's yeah. uh 
just a, a hobby or something. You know, this is something yeah. really, you know we're really really we're keen to build. To get it yeah, to excel, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. The goal the goal is to become the biggest comedy podcast in Britain. That's that's the first goal, and then we'll tackle the world after that. You know, so just getting on the top one hundred list will be the first goal. We'll see. I think you guys got it. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank we're you. I think you got stars. it. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Have you, have you managed to watch any of the shows yet? Uh, yeah, I watched a, um, a couple of the comedy shorts just on a, um, TikTok. I kind of and then I watched um, the one you guys were kind of talking about the pole shift, and then I, I I went and like started watching something else. So I'm, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch more well. of you guys' stuff though. I, I have to admit, <laughs> I've just been really busy the, like the last week or so. You know, oh, that's cool, man. So. Well, uh, episode seven launched last night, so if you get a chance, if you're bored or something. Um, let me know. Okay. Let me know your thoughts. But this will go out on episode eight and nine. Yeah. So we'll probably split it into a half hour part one, half hour part okay. two. Yeah. So I'll get the edit back to you before Monday. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there, mate. Awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm really glad this worked out. I'm really Likewise. happy about it. Yeah, look like, forward too. to doing this again, too, guys. I yeah, really me too, uh, man. wish I could give you a hug. Bring it in, bro. <laughs> mate, have yeah, a fantastic yeah, yeah. day, buddy, and we'll catch up soon. Yes, you guys too. Shot what you got. We're going all the way to the top. <sighs> We're here. Outro nine. Outro nine. Outro nine. That sounds like a boy band. <laughs> it does. Outro nine. Yeah. Outro nine. Outro nine. Please welcome to the stage. Outro, Outro nine. nine. <laughs> That's great. Who would they be? Girl band, boy band? Boy. I well, thought boy band. Boy. Yeah. It's a proper boy boy word. Yeah. Outro. Outro. It's masculine. Outro. It sa- it Am doesn't sound say- masculine. Am I allowed to say masculine? It doesn't sound masculine. Yeah, you can say the word masculine. Okay. Yeah. Just don't say negative things. Attached to it. Oh, okay. Because no ne- masculine is masculine. There was no negativity attached to that. Topic. Good. The fucking better not be. Otherwise, you'll see some masculinity. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of episode nine. Now, we're not finished yet. We've got no. a bit of chat. We've got a bit of chat. But this is... Uh, a bit of chat, a bit of banter. The, the format's changed slightly. I don't know if they've noticed, but we've taken all your feedback on board. And some of the recent feedback we've had is... Um, there's a big shadow over my hand. No, see, I have What's one on the side here? of my face. Where's the shadow just appeared from? It's because they're not in the right place, the lighting. They need moving. Yeah, they're always there. I know, and they, I always have a shadow on really? the side of my I've face. Really? I've only just noticed it. I Hold on. I Are we missing a trick here? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we could get... Oh, look at that! There's a dove! we got a dove in here! Sorry, guys. So he'll get his bottle out now in a minute. And Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, Put it to the wind. Uh, we've changed the format slightly. So um, we've dropped Am I the Arsehole. Yes. We love it. I love it. Turns out you guys don't love it so much. And that's cool. No, we have... I, I, I take that take that back. No. Take it back. They've, they've told us they don't like right. it. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. But on our... We have a Reddit channel as well, if you haven't been over there. And we've got some regulars on there who have been really supported. And who've been with us for quite some time. So hopefully they'll come over here and oh, have, okay. a, have a listen. So I, maybe I'll well, put a hopefully. little message in there hopefully. saying, guys, come on over. Okay, Where we, we might bring it back for maybe like a monthly special or something. Yeah, I no, think but so. Maybe. That'd be nice. Maybe. Just a one-off. Because I, I enjoy doing them. I um, love it. Uh, so we've, we've dropped out of the arsehole we've also reduced the number of reactions because you cheeky little fellows said you preferred it when we talk more I don't know why which I, I don't know why <laughs> don't either know why. but I think that's probably the biggest compliment we could get yeah so I'm quite happy with that one yeah. so we've uh, we've we've changed the show down to a 70-30 split 70% of us just talking shit 30% percent reaction stuff. The good, the, the good stuff. Not the good stuff, yeah. <laughs> Mate, the stuff we th- thought you would love. Yeah. Guys, guys. <laughs> if we'd known, we just had to sit here and talk. Now I've got to speak to him for 70% of the show. What the fudge? Come on. Fucking lucky. That's what you are. Well, I know there's many women who don't want to sit in my seat. Now we say... I'm going to auction it off next <laughs> week. <laughs> we, we saved a life today, this morning. Mm. Guys, we saved two people's lives. We did. It was... We were, we were driving through the local high street, weren't we? And there was this um, learner driver in front of us. There her. was. Doing fucking 20 and a 40. Was. And oh. I was like, oh, if, it, if it, there wasn't a learner badge, I would have lost my shit. I know. And it's like, we all remember being there and you don't want Don't I interrupt you too much? No. Okay. We don't want someone like... Are you sure? ...taking over <laughs> us. And so I'm used to it. I just crack on. <laughs> and um, Dan went, his brake lights are not working. Observant. 
And he's got his um, fog lights on and nothing, I see nothing's everything. working. So we get so far down the road and he's like, how are we going to stop him without we got, we got to tell this guy. freaking him out? He's a learner I mean? driver, right? Well, this, well, this was the dilemma, yeah. right? Because you've got me in the driving seat and I'm, I'm a large gentleman. Yeah. I'm 6'5", yeah. I'm 140 kilos, I'm a big dude, right? So if you've got me in the background in your rear view mirror going... Beep, beep, beep. Like this, I can imagine he thought twice. He must have thought, "What?" Because he was seventeen or something, yeah, wasn't he? Well, and, and it turns out Bless he was him. a young kid and his dad, right? Drive him to college. So, so I said, "I'll jump out and tell him." To it's probably the best. That. Probably. The so best. Um, I jumped out and I said to him, "Oh, mate, I'm really sorry. We've pulled you over." I said, "But your brake lights are not working." And he went, "You are joking." I said, "No, there's nothing coming." That up was a fake back. shock. Did you not see it? What him? Yeah, yeah he, he knew, knew they weren't he working, knew. and he was like. <gasps> Oh my God, I had no idea. So I was like, right, you know, it's, it's a bit dangerous. Can you get it sorted sort of thing? And he was like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we got in the car and we were really pleased with ourselves. We were really way. pleased because you you might be thinking, well, that's not saving someone's life. It is. However, picture the scene. There's an Arctic lorry behind him. It's wet outside. It's raining at the moment and it's cold. So the Arctic lorry yeah. might not have seen him break and smash right. Could have killed them both. Could have flattened them both. It's slushy out there. It's like sleety it's rainy it's muddy it's horrible we saved two people's lives today well done mate yeah. well done mate how many lives have you saved today We've that question does not go to doctors or nurses no <laughs> if you are watching we would like to know yeah we would yeah 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 <laughs> how many have healthy. you saved today god imagine if a nurse comes back and goes oh, she works in like you know uh, um oncology department or something and she's like oh i gave resus to like 12 people today and brought them all back wow could you imagine the fucking government have you heard what they're doing now no. They're charging nurses and doctors up to a £1,000 a year on average to park outside the hospital where they work. They've done that in Wales for years. They've only just stopped doing it. Oh, my. When I heard that, mate, I got so angry. Do you know why? These people it? save our lives and we treat them like shit. Mm-hmm. Do you know why It drives done me it? crazy. Do you know why they've done it? Why? Because they sold the contracts for their car parks to private To private, companies. you fuckers. You absolute yep. fucks. Wales. You fucks. Wales was the only place in the UK that still had you that in force. fucking fucks. And then they stopped it, and now they've started it in Oh, England. it's outrageous. It's outrageous. If, if, I'm angry for the if, NHS. If anybody deserves a free hall pass, it's them. Now, look, can, I, can, can we do a... Um, I have a complaint to make! Yeah. Right, I could fix this country real quick, real easy. There's lots of little things that I would change almost immediately, right? And if you're asking me the question, I know you weren't. I'm asking you the question. But if you're asking me the question, what I would do if I was in charge... Dan, what would you do if you were in charge? Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you. Right? Tell me, Dan! Now, uh, from a psychology perspective, nurses in particular, and doctors, but more nurses than doctors, I'm going to upset some people here, but nurses in particular cannot be paid a big wage, right? Yeah. It's unethical for them to be paid a big wage because you don't want people in that position who are motivated by money. You want people in that position who are Most motivated care to care. So the quickest yeah. way to get rid of all the people who are money-driven is to bring the salary down to 10 grand a year. Which right? makes it horrific. That's How? not. No, 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 no. Hear me out. It's not enough. Hear me out. So the salary for a nurse, if I was in charge, the salary for a nurse would be 20 grand a year, mm-hmm. right? Then fuck all. Nothing. Yeah. Right? Not enough. Not it's enough. Nowhere near it's enough. not enough, right? But that would be the salary, yeah. right? And then on top of that, I would I would in, enforce either free rent yeah. for nurses yeah. or a significant 80, Reduction. 90% fund to pay their mortgage, whatever well, their mortgage might be, right? Yeah. I haven't stopped there. Okay. Right? <laughs> He's still going. The other thing I'd do is give them all a petrol card or a train card or whatever. Yeah. Try, if they want an b- electric bike, you give them a voucher, you get a bike, whatever the transport is to get to work. Certainly not fucking parking. There's no way I would charge an hour's parking. And, and you'd make it so it's free travel, free, essentially free home accommodation. You don't have to worry about that bill. Or at the least most reductions. In, the mo- yeah, absolutely. A huge reduction. Um, and then the other thing would be food vouchers, right? Food yeah. vouchers. So that half, if not more, of their, their weekly essential foods are paid for and they don't have to worry about it. healthy, if they're and not eating good food. No, st- stress management. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Healthy and stress management. The nurses mm-hmm. at the moment, nurses, I fucking love you guys. Yeah. I love you. You have no idea how much respect I have for the NHS and the, and the nurses and the doctors um, and, and everyone in that team. You know, yeah, the, it takes a big yeah, team. Yeah, the carers, yeah. the the the, the, um, the groundsmen, the fucking, oh, the, whole, the whole thing, the receptionist, everyone. Huge, huge amount of respect. You've got to put up with so much bullshit, right? Um, 
But there's no denying most nurses are obese. Right? And the reason they're obese is because they're stressed to fuck. They Full work 12-hour days, four or five days a week. They've got life shit on top of that. They've got the, the, the financial stress because yeah. they get paid fuck all. It's a cocktail to eat more. Of course. Right? And, then, and then they snack at, at work. I've, I've worked with th- so many nurses. They snack throughout the day. They get the most convenient things because they're stressed to fuck. Because they have the, the, the most essential the life day. job. They have the most essential job. There's yeah. no job more important than a nurse or a doctor's job, in my opinion, right? So it's paramount that the country ensure that those individuals in particular are stress-free. Remove all stresses. Give, give them free food, free travel, free accommodation. Give them a salary so they can go in and give, give them six, seven, eight weeks a year holiday. Make that yeah. the fucking yeah. job, right? So I they mean, don't have to worry. Look what they went through in COVID and this is how we're treating them. I ain't preach, sister. Fuck preach. Me. Preach. Fuck me. These people went through... There, there was war situations in these hospitals. They were like... It was like ET. They were head mm. to toe. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. worried. They, could, they people were not seeing their families because they were caring for us. They were yep. looking after us, and then we want to go and treat them even yeah, worse. Yeah, and now we're charging car parking tickets. It's fucking disgusting. How quickly? It's disgraceful. How quickly people forget, and people are up in arms over stupid fucking things, and the real things they're not even bothered. It's about. disgusting and disgraceful. We should start a petition. I know you're probably thinking, Dan, 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 it's it's all very well saying that, but how are you going to fucking fund it? Well, the first thing I would do is legalise weed. And shut up, you don't know what you're talking about if you don't think that's a good idea. (laughs) Shut up, we don't smoke weed if you don't know what No, 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 you don't even have to smoke weed. Right, you have to understand it's a fucking plant. It grows out of the ground. It's the most natural thing you can possibly get. And your body has cannabinoid receptors all over it. Every muscle and every yeah. nerve, every bone has a cannabinoid receptor. Cannabis in particular is a pain reliever. Which is why they're now prescribing uh, it to people. Thankfully, I've got a prescription. Yeah, you have. But it's just fucking annoying. That, like, the, one of the most medicinal plants out there, we've, le- Ill- we've made illegal. And you can be arrested for G- guys, it. Mate, do you know there's, there's guys in prison in America yeah. for 50, 60 years because they had a 10 bag of weed on them? It's insane. It's in but even though they've insane. changed the laws in a lot of states, they haven't let them out of the prisons. They're still in there. I know. It's... It, uh, it, it, there's so many things I'll I fucking change. So I I'd legalise weed straight away and I'd also legalise heroin and I'd legalise cocaine and meth and, and all the street drugs. I could legalise them instantly. I'd create factory after factory, jobs after jobs to clean those drugs up, take them off the fucking streets, make it purified, make it clean, offer dispensary kits for those that want to use it, offer it at a very reasonable price so the addiction doesn't become life-destroying and then offer them therapy and medical aid to help them th- through the difficult process that they have because nobody's a fucking yeah. addict without immense emotional trauma. So f- it's a fucking trauma. The government should be making it a priority to fix people's emotional trauma, to reduce their fucking stress levels and to treat us with a little bit of fucking respect and give us some fucking support. <sighs> That's what the government should be doing. Yeah. But no, they're all profiting of each other. The corrupt fucking mandates. That it's just... Insanity. It's, it's insanity. Hancock, More people were made billionaires during COVID than any other exactly. time in history. It's insanity that that's even a stat. And then you've got Matt, Matt Hancock. Oh, that motherfucker. Fucking opinions and me- WhatsApp messages from him and Boris. And you're like... Mm. Specifically stating, he said, and I quote, we need to scare the shit out of the public with the new variant. Mm. That is the man that was a fucking MP. He was working for us. He was trusted. He was voted to be where he was by the people who fucking trusted him. He should be ashamed of himself. Should be ashamed of himself. Himself. Anyway, the the nurses. The we nurses. Thank you. thank you, guys. We love you. And everybody who worked through COVID to get us through the other side so that we weren't stuck in this horrible cycle. But we all need to stick together and still support each other. And I think that's sort of diluting down a lot now. We've lost community. Yeah. If there's one positive COVID had is that after it, people came together like like with more yeah. cement do you know what i mean there was more yeah. necessity and urgency to want to be with a loved one so like it did me and my neighbors got so close yeah you know unfortunately my one name but he died during covid but i got to know him 
and he was an older man, and he was he was reminded me of my dad. He was right. really set in his old, in his ways. He was a pro, he was like everyone in the street said he's lived there for like fifteen years and he don't fucking speak to no one, cat. Right. But he spoke to me. Right. <laughs> right. Because you know me, I'll speak yeah, to yeah, him, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got on and I wearing a low cut top that day, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and like I go and do his shopping and all the rest of it for him. And he was a lovely, lovely guy. And unfortunately, he passed away during COVID. But it was just it's coming to force all. It was an opportunity to get to know the people around you. And I feel quite honoured that I do know. My neighbours very well now. That's lovely. Yeah. And that that was a big benefit of after it mm. happening. It did bring everyone closer together, similar to what war did, I would imagine. And uh, like the World Cup after um, COVID, or was it during COVID? I can't quite remember now. I think the World Cup was after, wasn't there was it? A, there was a there World was, Cup around the COVID. Yeah, it was after for, because for they facade. were only allowed so many people in there. When and they. the patriotism, patriotism was, I could mm. see it, mm. you know. I could see us binding together because we were all going through this shite. So there was we a, needed something these, to focus these on. These points of unification in sport and, and, and what and music, and it, uh, it was nice to see. And like a Thursday night going out and clapping for the NHS. Oh, that's uh, been that forgotten. That was lovely. That was but lovely. it's been forgotten, and yeah. now they want to do this, Yeah, guys. but I'm, I, I'm sure they would have preferred... A check for a couple of hundred quid every month rather than exactly. fucking claps. Guys, in the comments, please let us know if you were a nurse or you were in any of the services during COVID and how you found it. Talking of doctors, have you phoned them yet? No. I'm not home till, t- till tomorrow. Right, you're no longer allowed to speak on the show. That's it, you're done. You're done. Guys, um, thanks for joining, coming to the, wor- uh, the, the World Cup. <laughs> I can't do it without you. Come on. <laughs> I just, just can't instantly fall apart. <laughs> instantly fall apart. <laughs> We're working to the World Cup. It's FIFA BBC Radio 1. What? It's the Dan Why show. haven't you booked? Yeah, it is the Dan Weaver show. Thank okay. you. Why haven't you booked the doctors? I, is this the complaint button? Yes. I have a complaint to make. You're not allowed to press that. Well, I've pressed it. Right. Into I the have fucking a microphone. To into the, the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think my chair is Into the microphone! My chair is broken. No, oh. you just got to push the latch in. Do I? There you go. Now, oh. now lean back. Oh, yeah. fabulous. Fuck it, fuck Thank you, Dee. <laughs> I don't even know how I'll right. get anywhere. What's the complaint? Right. My complaint is... I'll be is, the judge of this. Right. I need to get hold of my doctor. Okay? Right. Phone 111. Phone your local doctor surgery. Phone your nan to make an appointment. Right. I've downloaded the app. It gives me a bot. Right. Why have you downloaded the app? Why haven't you fucking let's, called them? Right, finish. what's their number? I'll call no, them, no, I'm no. going to call them right now and we're going to get this done right now. You, what's listen, their number? Listen to me, right? There's no point. What's 111 in Welsh? <laughs> you don't even know the language. Die, die, die. <laughs> hey Siri, call die, die, die. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Can you try again? <laughs> I don't even think it's die. I don't know. Anyway, right? I've downloaded the app and I've spoken to the bot and I'm trying to get an appointment, right? Now, it's an online system. Have so we established why you haven't called them? I have. No, this is what I'm saying. I have called them, right? And what did they say? When I rung them, they put me into a, um, a waiting system for 15 minutes, right? To tell me, after I've waited for 15 minutes in the queue, that because I didn't ring at 8 o'clock in the morning, there's no, point, no appointments available any longer, and that it's an emergency appointment only, right? I don't feel I'm an emergency. I don't, right? right? So, okay, so then I go on to the booking system they've told me to go on to on the voice mail and you can't make an appointment why because it's not an option so you got to call them then right? so you've got to call them right, right? so I so if you just did that the first time six weeks ago everything would have been okay wouldn't so it i go home later today right there's no point in me making an appointment to see a doctor if i can't physically go and see my doctor why a phone call is better than nothing so talk to him on the phone, tell him the symptoms, and he will do what I said you should do, is go to fucking hospital. Nobody has diarrhoea and vomiting for eight weeks straight without there being a serious fucking problem. So, so sort your shit out. Monday. I love you. Sort your shit out. It's starting to get on me tits. Monday will be that day. Okay. If it's not, I prob- you're fired. 
I promise you, hand on heart. You're not heart. fired. I can't do it without you. Hand but. on heart. <laughs> Some I'll other word that sounds intense. Yeah. Um, 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 I will. I'll stop you going and having your hair done. Yes. <laughs> I won't pay you. There, there we go. There, done. That's the. I have, I have control over that one. Done. I'm not paying you until you go to the doctors. I'm going Monday. What? Monday. Right, well, we'll see about that, won't we? Okay. I'm going yeah. Monday. I've promised you that. That's payday. Ages away. 21 <laughs> days away. All right, you've got three oh, weeks. you got three weeks. I swear to God, if this t- turns out to be something like fucking bowel cancer, I will slap the shit out of you. It's not bad. I'm cancer. just telling you, I'm just, I'll, I'll be fuming, mate. I'll be fuming. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> so you can so you can't die, okay? <laughs> oh god, it's not. It's really not, dude. And you know when you're seriously unwell. Yes. And for a while I was unwell and now I'm just I went to the local chemist, right? And I bought a load well, I wanted to buy a load of um Probiotics to oh all God, good bacteria. Is, and this stuff. made me so angry. So this made me so me. angry. Right, I'll tell you. Uh, d- just stop talking. I tell. <laughs> I tell you the context. Right, I'll let you continue in a second. But there, there needs to be context to this. This, this story. Right, okay. for the last four weeks, I've been hearing oh, the car insurance is going to be an extra five hundred pound. Oh, the dishwasher's broken. Oh, we've got to get a new TV. So all I'm hearing is these these things that need to be paid for that are escalating, right? So one would assume you'd be a bit conservative with your pennies, right? Yeah. How much did you spend on probiotics? £65. Should I slap her? Should I slap her? You can't put a price on Just Just a little stinger. Do you know what I mean? Just a little stinger. 65! <laughs> £65! I know. On yoghurt! But it's it's actually helping. I don't know whether it's a placebo or not, but I'm feeling... I've got a fromage fucking fray in the fridge you can have for a fiver. <laughs> 65 quid. Mate, it's really, it's really good. Is it? Hope so. Is it? And I'm drinking Aptamel as well, and that's helping too. Thank you, Aptamel. Well, two days ago, you thought it was Goldstones. I did. I woke right, up so, like, so oh, what is it? Which one is it? Well, we had a takeaway last night, didn't we? And I was a bit you iffy... Had a no, uh, no what'd you I, have? I had burger. a chicken burger yeah. and a couple of chippies. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it might really, really hurt my stomach and I'm going to end up like doubled over by the morning. Right. So I was a bit like, oh, do I really want to eat it? And I thought, do you know what? It's a chicken burger. It's a bit of bread and chicken. No, but it's the oil that is cooked in. That's, that's right. what uh, oil affects me. Fats always have is my IBS, right? right? So I was like, Good is sense. it going to re- is it really going to be that bad? Just try it, and then I can know that then I can take that off the list, right? So, I woke up this morning, a bit windy, a bit, you know... <coughs> a bit gassy. A bit gassy, a bit a bit sort of... Lady Trumps. Yeah, but not... Fairy dust. But not... Uh, there was no throwing up. There was no diarrhoea. Okay. So... So it wasn't the oil, then? It wasn't the oil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're we'll getting there. So what is it? Are we, are we going to diagnose this through process of elimination? Absolutely. Fuck. How else am I going to do this it? This is 1845. How else am I going to do and, it? I'll go and get a leech in a minute and go and put it on your forehead and that'll cure you. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Anyway, enough about that. Um, I've got a bit of a issue at the moment. Well, we know that. Come and on, I, was just, I, I was describing Will to you, you in the car. Me in? Absolutely not. Talk about it. <laughs> what song is this? Um... Craig David. No, that is, can you feel me in? That's not the same melody you just did. You went, can you feel me in? Did I? Okay. Can you feel me in? There we go. Got it there. Let's talk about it. No, it's not let's talk about it. Is it not? Two songs together. (laughs) I don't know. Can you feel me in? Is it let's talk about it? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to find it. It's going to rock us off anyway. Can you feel me in? Come on. Anyway, I was explaining the problem I have to you in the car this morning, and you were flabbergasted at a particular description of something that happened, that's happening, and you didn't know it happened to men. I'll explain. Yes, please. Yes. No, actually, I was really flabbergasted because I've never heard of this. Right. So, guys, in the comments, back me up here. Back me up here. This is a thing, right? So, and it's particularly 
exaggerated for myself at the moment because of my medication. So for those, I've, I've explained many times before when you're into it, but I have to inject one milliliter of testosterone every week as I've got to do it to the day I die. Got a problem. So um, I've been keeping on top of my injections yeah, every really, week. Really right, every week. Yeah. And I'm just about to change medication, thankfully, to a new one called Nibido. You've been after this one since last summer. Mate, it's been ridiculous. It's taken me two years to yeah. get to this point, right? It's two years to get to this point. And uh, the problem I have with the weekly injections I have at the moment is every other one, if not almost every one, I get an infection from. Um, it's just you really do. fucking annoying. I don't know what it, what, what's causing it. It's proper needles. It's properly cleaned. It, I don't know what the fuck's causing it. But every, I think it's the oil base. Almost every injection I get an infection. And that means I have to go on antibiotics. And that means that's a trigger for me, for me. Painkillers, because when I take the painkillers, it's no, no problem. So it's this... It's this cycle, isn't it? It's this uh, evil twin that I have to fucking live with. It's just a pain in the ass, quite literally. <laughs> literally. And uh, so, Nibido, <laughs> yeah. Nibido, Nibido, is, uh, Nibido is an injection every 12 weeks. That is going to make such so a difference. So it'll go from 50 infections a year down to four. Oh, mate. If at all. Mate. So it'll be a massive thing, right? But So I injected my last... Um, the common testosterone I'm on uh, two days ago. And because I've been keeping on top of my top, uh, my medication, my testosterone is quite high at the moment and therefore my libido is through the fucking roof, right? So um, I'm, I'm masturbating twice a day. It's, 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 it's manageable, but it's a bit ridiculous, right? So it's a sign that my test is too high, so I need to bring it down a little bit. So I'll tell the doc about that and he'll yeah. adjust everything. Anyway, um, and I'm getting so horny at the moment that in the middle of the night, I'm waking up humping the sheets. I'm just, I'm just humping. Like I'm not even. I like and sub, it and subconsciously, consciously and subconsciously. Right. right. I'm drifting off the bed and I'm humping. Right. It's just a mild hump. I'm just squeezing my glutes and I'm just thrusting. It's, yeah. it's a comfort thing. So um, I liken it to f- fidgety leg syndrome. Have you ever had that? No. Where I Where you haven't. just can't keep your legs still. It's no. like that. I just can't not. I have, Fuck. That, I, have it, I have it with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it I just, won't stop. It's just this thing I have to just 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 keep just I've just got to keep moving. It's just the it's wow. quite annoying and frustrating, but it's quite pleasurable at the same time. It's, I'd imagine it would be yeah, quite pleasurable. Can't get off on it or anything, but it's it's yeah. not a it's 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 something that I'm quite happy to just go through because it, it's got a pleasurable sensation to yeah. it. But it's just it, it it then also just. Well, it's, it's going to... Makes me a bit frustrated as well. And it's also going to um, interrupt your sleep. It does. It li- I yeah. barely got any sleep last night because of it. I, I was waking up fucking humping. I woke up at half three. I just couldn't get back to sleep. Wow. So, yeah. I've just, never heard of that. But you've never heard of that. No. So, guys, in the comments, when you get the horn on, let me know. And uh, for whatever reason, you can't masturbate or get some sexy time. Do you hump the sheets? Yes or no? Let me know. It's I'm a thing. I'm trying to think it's if a I've, thing. I've, I've woken up from a sex dream and thought, Fuck me, what well, I must have been humping my blanket. <laughs> I've done that. The drench down there, is it? <laughs> just <laughs> just a gush. And the blanket's between my legs, so I'm like, okay. Do you do happen? the one leg, one out? One leg in, one leg out trick to cool your body down at night? Yeah. Oh, yes. And then I also do the... Um, I, I'm, I'm terrible because I sleep on my stomach and I hold onto the top of the bed and my feet curl around the bottom of the bed. This is ridiculous. How have you not mentioned this before? I sleep like a sloth. <laughs> right? So, t- so, so your like, hands are at the yeah. top of the do, uh, yep. uh, mattress. Yep. Your Over. feet are hooked at the bottom yeah. of the mattress. So I hold on when I sleep. And what, are tits just akimbo? Just, just lie on them. Just, just, just lie, lie on, on them. Okay. Keep everything there. <laughs> Everything's comfy. Not uncomfortable? No, I quite like it. It's quite Not, comfy. Right, okay. It, it's my comfy position. That's how you sleep. That's how I sleep. So Mike turns over sometimes and you're just like this. Yep. Just, okay, fine. I, I sleep <laughs> face down all the time. <laughs> Whether my ass is in the air or my face it's is It's the just, weirdest. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, okay. I sleep like a baby. It's like a toddler. I like, sleep in the recovery position. Okay. So on your side. One, on my side, one leg crossed up, one leg extended mm. out, and then kind of my hands like this around the pillow and I'm just... Well, I have this big nine foot pillow when I stay at yours. Right. That sort of keeps me in one position. Because you're like a baby and you always roll out of bed. Yeah, because yeah, I roll out. And at home, I have to sleep next to the wall because right. otherwise I end up out of the bed. Right, okay. Right? We should look into here more rather than talk to each other. Yeah, we should. We've got yeah. to remember Sorry, we're recording guys. a podcast. Hi guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, so when I sleep and I get really, really hot, I tend to pop my feet out, right? And then I have this whole vision of someone from under the bed oh, for grabbing my feet. Are you 12 feet. years old? And I have to tuck them back in. 
I, I haven't worried about that since I was oh, mate. eight. <laughs> mate, you have no idea. Do you still worry that someone's under your bed? Yeah. Uh, right, guys, bear with me. The other night, I, I arrived at Dan's. Roly was there. And, under uh, your bed. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, just, his eyes just open yeah, up. Just just like, like, <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, you could fit a human under that bed. No, you couldn't. If you took if we took all the stuff from underneath it, you no, could, you I, Not I a chance. would fit under that Not bed. Not a chance. Not a chance, mate. We're it's like that high. We're the test, frame. We're testing it when Fine. we get back. Right. I will get under that bed, right? right. And um, he said to me the next day, he went, um, "Oh, did the boys play a prank on you last night?" And I was like, <laughs> "No, why?" <laughs> And he said, oh, we were going to put Alexa into your bed and then start playing, like, spooky music and talking to you through Alexa. It would have been good. Yeah. And I was like... Do you know what Henry is, wanted to do? This is why I dream, right? Do you know what Henry wanted to do? I don't think I want to know Henry, why. Henry wanted to set his phone up and hide it and record your reaction. I was like, there's no way we can do that. <laughs> He's yeah. left it in there and watched me get changed. I think, and he, I think he's got a bit of a crush on you. Oh, mate. I last, think he's got a bit of a crush on you. Last night I went to bed and all. Was he like whipping you in the kitchen? No. Was he like Why pushing you or something? No. I could hear I could hear him giggling and. No. I didn't know if he was trying to do that, you know, dead arm no, thing that people no, do. No, no, right. Oh, no. He never, never touches me. Um, I don't mean bad. No, no, I know. No, no, no. Yeah. no, 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 no. I don't even know what you're referring to. He beats to. me. He never beats me with a stick. No, we, I went downstairs because Sam said to him, have you sorted the washing out for me, right? And he went, yeah, I've put it in the tumble dryer. Now, the tumble dryer's not even plugged in. Right? So <laughs> there's no way that's Henry. That's going to yeah, work, that's right? Henry. So she said to him, no, I've asked you to put it on the airer. Because he's got one of these lovely... She did. Really I was there when she asked him, yeah. right? So he's gone, oh, I can't believe you're making me do this. I'll do it later. And I went... Henry, I'm going to bed. You're going to have to go and do it now, right? Because it's in my room, yeah. okay? And he's like, oh, like proper teenager, just stomped his way downstairs. And then when he came back, I went, I'm checking your work, mate, because if it's 80% folded still up, <laughs> you're coming back down and you're doing it again, right? <coughs> just winding him up. I wasn't checking on him or nothing. So I go down, and when I say there was four cats and a dog in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> they were all down there just chilling. They were all down yeah. there chilling, right? Yeah. So I was like... Henry, I've got the animal farm in my fucking bedroom here, mate. I said, you've let them all in. Can you give me a hand? Because MJ would not get out. Every time I went one way, he had head under yeah, the yeah. bed. So he's there, and we're rounding up these cats to get them out. And I'm like, right, MJ out. Ed, out. And if anyone had heard me, it was like, I had the football team in my room, right? And I went, come on, Thea, off you go. He went, and Henry out. And I went, yes, and you have got to go. Trying to get approval to stay. Have I got to go? Yes, have go I? Aww. Aww. Yeah, it's very I funny. Got, Henry reminds me so much of me when I was 18, because when I was 18, my, well, 17, my mum and dad would ask me to do something and I would do it through gritted teeth mm. and I would do it at the the worst the, capacity the least do it, standard yeah. needed to pass doing the thing so if my dad ever asked me to wash the car I'd get the bucket and the sponges out and all the soaps and I'd get the hose and I'd drag it around and I'd turn it on I would just put water on it yeah and then pack it all away and then my dad would come did you clean the car and I'd go yeah and he goes but did you scrub it with the the thing and the soap and I went no, you asked me to wash the car. I washed the car. And he goes, no, you need to clean the car. And I said, well, you didn't fucking say clean the car. You said wash the car. And all of a Literal, sudden, I'm in it? this argument. I knew what he meant, but I was like, no, he asked me to wash the car. So, that's all so I'm going, going to, to put do. water on it and wash it. That's so funny. And that's what Henry does. Unless he's like, if you ask him to build something, he'll, he'll do it to the nth yeah. degree. He's fucking yeah. so passionate about yeah. it. He's amazing at it. He really is. Um, but if you ask him to hang the washing. Oh, mate. I, <laughs> I, I did have a little little look apologies sam i was too tired to straighten it out it's literally he's balled it all up and thrown it on and then i didn't have time to sort it i thought i'll do it this yeah. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow well that would have been sam saying can you put that on the dryer and he's gone yep <laughs> just put it on the dryer mate yeah. when I went That's down there, there was a pair of leggings on the floor a pair of socks <laughs> on the floor and I was like Henry you haven't even put it all on the area it's on the floor so yes now talking about crushes yeah um, <clears throat> are we talking about Chris I want to I want to I want to talk about <laughs> I want to talk about equality I want to talk about sexual harassment right now it's happened to me many a time now picture the scene picture the scene right okay. let's say you go into a shop yeah <clears throat> and upon entering the shop there's an all-male um 
shopping assistants or mm-hmm. uh, checkout people, and they start going, cool, look at that. And they start grabbing your boob, and they start going, oh, God, you train. And they start saying all sexual advances, and then one of them says, looks you in the eye, and goes, I don't swallow. Sorry, I don't lick pussy. <laughs> right? I think How I'm- would you feel? When I think I was on a set of like porn, being up. punked, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> porn porn up. Like, yeah. Oh no, <laughs> imagine. Sorry, where did I go? Anyway, um, <laughs> um, how would you feel if that if that happened to you when you walked into a shop? I don't think I'd go there again. There'd be lawsuits, right? Mm, I wouldn't say lawsuits. I'd just avoid. If it. If they started oh, groping no, you, me. yeah, 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 without your permission or consent. Oh, has that happened to you, mate? I won't mention the shop. You know the shop. Okay. I won't go into the shop again because the last time I went into the shop, three of the women behind the counter were literally doing this, doing this to me, grabbing my arms. One of them put their hands on their chest and went, oh, like that. And then one of them looked at me and went, I don't swallow. I, w- I felt so uncomfortable I had to you, leave. I'm are, smiling because it's, is, it sounds a bit weird from a dude's perspective, but mate, I genuinely felt uncomfortable. Mate, I'm a little bit angry for you. I'm a li- I was genuinely uncomfortable. I'm, now, I just walked out, thought nothing of it, because, because there's not that intimidating yes. element that women have to it's go not, through. They're, they're not overpowering. Correct. I can yeah. just walk out. I'm going to be fine. Yeah. So it's not like for like. It's not an equality no. thing. But I did get to the point where I was like, I'm going to leave now because... One I of them's going to try and grab my cock. Like that's that's where he was headed. It was just I was just like, that's this odd. is this is this is not the situation I want to be in today. Yeah, it was weird. But like I said, I didn't have to deal with the intimidation. I didn't have any fear. I wasn't worried that they were going to pin me down or anything like that. So it's not the same bullshit women yeah. have to go through. Yeah, of course. But it was still bullshit. And I just thought, Mate, if I if I phoned you. the police, if I went to court, I think I'd be laughed at. Yeah, and I, but I'm angry for you. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. I am. I'm, angry I'm a little for bit you. angry. And um, it didn't dirty talk or warm me up or anything. <laughs> I didn't even put their finger up your bum. <laughs> I didn't even start the motor. <laughs> uh. Didn't finish you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't even fucking swallow. Oh. Rubbish. <laughs> Ladies, you let the side down. Oh, uh, just it was just it was just, and I, 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 it obviously must happen more often than not. Because it's not the first time not something like that's happened. Not a gaggle of women, though. A gaggle of women is like, is that the thing? Standard, mate, for me. <laughs> standard. Just the standard Thursday. It's just my day. Just the standard Thursday. Mate, can I just tell you guys, right? We can go anywhere and he just gets ogled out. Oh, shut up. It's not like that at all. It's not okay, like that Okay, I'm going to take you back to last summer. It is like that. Right? <laughs> There we go. It's Do you not know like that. Come on, stop summer. it. I'm literally going to blush. I don't like this. Do you remember this. last summer? I don't summer? like it. Huh? Do you remember last summer? Is this a horror movie? What? We went down my local high street, right? <laughs> he got accosted in the deli. Okay, can we change the conversation, please? No. Nope. He then... I feel uncomfortable. A, he then got accosted <laughs> in the local kebab shop, right? <laughs> then he got accosted by the beauty salon across the road from... <laughs> <laughs> the kebab shop. They were all stood in the window staring. To be fair, the to the point where I came out and went. <laughs> <laughs> the the beauty shop was particularly weird because was weird. there was like seven women in there, and they all had their faces pressed. Against and as I walked past, I turned to look, and they're all looking at me out through the window. And oh, I was like, "What they, is this?" They must have all gone. <laughs> what is this? No. In in the in the ladies of Barry's defence, we don't. Often, They're only human. We don't. We don't often get a Dan Wheeler walking down the high street. Oh, mate, stop! Please, look, look, look. look what else have we got to talk about? Because he's so tall. Oh, we haven't got anything else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so take it as a compliment. It, it, there's a there's a there's a veiled com- compliment in there, mm. but I, I feel like a piece of meat. But I I literally, I literally was like, I'll protect you. <laughs> Little fucking jumping leprechaun running round. Yeah, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, it's it's, it's weird, but also nice at the same time. I I I find it quite funny. <laughs> right, I think that's the end of the outro. Yeah. Let's let's finish on that awkward point. <laughs> God, I feel like how I felt in truffles. Fuck, I'm gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you so much for watching episode thank 9 you. of the Dan Wheeler show featuring Kaz we really appreciate <sighs> you 
Drop us a cheeky subscribe. Drop us a oh, cheeky we comment. Haven't finished. Why? Because we haven't done our new feature. Oh fuck. Confessions. Confessions. What's it? T- tell them. This is my confession. Oh, what is that song? How does that start? I used to love that song. It's Neo, isn't it? It's Neo. Hold on. This is my confession. Go What's on. the? Uh, hold on. Oh, I'm gonna have to find it. I fucking love that song. Yeah, me too. Conf- it's by um, oh, Usher, isn't it? Usher, not Neo. I was close. <laughs> Usher, confessions. Confessions. We'll have to put it on the button. So put it by your mic, and we'll put it on the button. Which button are we gonna put it on? Put what on? Because it's gonna be a segment. <laughs> Oh, you want to do it like that, do you? Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't find it here. Right, anyway. Oh, here we go. Here we go, like, You keep talking. Okay, so the idea of this Confessions is it's a new feature that you can then go on and give us and drop us an email. So we want you. We want your participation right? So we want you to tell us your dirtiest, dirtiest darkest <laughs> secrets, okay? Yep. And Confess your sins. And our next episode which will be episode 10 yeah me and dan will kick it off with one of ours okay on the next one yeah we're not gonna do it now no why not oh you have to have you done your nan's story no no see we're missing loads well that can be my confession that's your confession right yes that's your confession are we doing that next week yeah right we'll do the nan okay. the nan story next week so the sorry nan's, nan the nan story oh we've promised them though did we? Yeah, we no, promised we, didn't. we did. We did promised we? them that you tell them this one. All right, hold in on. Episode nine. Do you remember this? What a banger. Watch this. These are my confessions. This gonna be the hardest thing I think I ever had to do. Got me talking to myself and I'm gonna tell you. Oh, I love that song. I love that song. If you That's love the theme tune then to Confessions. Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> so if you love that. Confessions, well, we can sing it. Yeah, that's true. We can sing it. If you Just love... Just when I thought I could think I like it. Go on. So if you love to get your confession off your chest, you can do it and put your name on it. Off you your chest. Can, <coughs> yeah, off your chest. You can do it with a pseudonym. If you're being cute. <laughs> you don't have to I give am. us your name. Okay? <laughs> So we want you to let us know all your deepest, darkest secrets. So maybe you find your uncle attractive and you just don't know what to do. Maybe you I, slept I with your teacher at school <laughs> and you've just got to get off your chest. Maybe you robbed a bank and you've just got to tell us. We just want to know. We'll take right? your name off it and we'll read your confession. Well, you don't. If you set, if you're going through email, you don't have to put your real name in. So we won't. We won't read out your name. We okay? won't read out the name or the email address. No, exactly. Or put it on the screen. Just the confession. Just the confession. So, guys, get your thinking caps on and get them in our email address, which is on our site. Wheeler at the Dan Wheeler Show dot com. Nice so and simple. Wheeler at the Dan Wheeler Show dot com. We should have a Wheeler for that too. At the Dan Wheeler Show to go. I just like interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Weirdo. I just like pinching you. <laughs> Guys, let us know what our confessions. What? Nana I thought that was it. Nana story. I can't do that now. I thought we said next week. Confessions. Are next Guys, week. if you want to hear the Nan story, you'll have to stick around in the comments. Let me know. We'll make it as part of the intro for episode 10. It will be a 10 episode special. And we haven't done Zombie Apocalypse either. That's coming next week. That, oh, We're doing the zombie next, next week. week. We, we yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yet. We We're doing zombie next week. The zombie apocalypse feature is coming next I week. I can't wait. I'm, but I'm looking forward so to it. So excited. Guys, so let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you for stopping by. We really appreciate you. And don't forget to email us our confessions. What else do they need yes, to do? And then you need to give us a cheeky little like and subscribe and come back to see. Baby, come back. Baby, come back. Now, does the verse go like this? Baby, Baby come back. Like, I don't know what the words yeah, are. It does, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the words are. No. We'll find out for next week. <laughs> Gang, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Shot and what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage.